All right. Well, as I said, thank you very much for joining us today. I'm very happy to present uh, Document Management with BIM 360 Docs on behalf of Autodesk Construction as well as the Applied Technology Group. Um, at this point, I would like to uh, thank everyone for taking the time and introduce myself really quick. Um, I'm Anthony Governanti. I work with Autodesk and specifically in our uh, construction group here at Autodesk around industry strategy and marketing. I'm joined today by a colleague, um, Sean Butler. He's also on my team in the construction space. Um, he's going to be doing the demonstration of BIM 360 Docs when we get there, uh, as well as the uh, Applied Technology Group, uh, all the folks there. So we've got Chris Cole on the line and, and many of the folks that you're working with today um, uh, ready and, and waiting to answer questions as we go. So I think with that, um, we're going to go ahead and get started here and we'll jump into the presentation. So we really feel that today we're all facing a lot of challenges in the construction industry as we tend to as we try to execute our building projects. But there's evidence to support that a few key things are driving an unmanageable amount of uncertainty in today's environment. In their 2014 Managing Uncertainty and Expectations in Building Design and Construction study, McGraw Hill Construction found that owners see errors and omissions as one of the top causes for project uncertainty on their projects. When asked about the future and their ex future expectations on these factors for uncertainty, 80% of the owners responded that they were unsure if future projects would be completed without added cost due to these factors. In other words, they're not confident that our industry can remove these factors from project execution anytime soon. Compare that to their willingness to accept the costs from errors and omissions in the future with 78% expecting only 1-5% to increase in costs from their projects. We're all challenged with determining a way to reduce the impact and even remove the chances for errors and omissions in our project execution. Much of the errors and omissions seen today in project execution can be attributed to the lack of change management. Managing change is one of the most daunting tasks in our construction projects today. Beyond the drawings and the models, there's lots of information and documents that go into every construction project. Whether it's specifications, submittals, plans, or modules, I'm sorry, excuse me, models, the amount of items to track can overwhelm even the most organized individual. There's also a lot of disruption in our daily project activities with New cloud-based apps arriving on the scene seemingly every week, the use of mobile hardware like tablets and smartphones on the rise, and the fact that our industry is moving towards 3D, these all contribute to a less efficient workflow and increase in project risks around costs and schedule overruns. We at Autodesk and ATG see many companies today burdened with these challenges. They have too many point products deployed in the field that overlap and function and create a disconnection between the project stakeholders, which creates a loss of information. Here, we can see how information is lost at every phase of the plan, design, build, operate life cycle. The information from construction operations is seen as the most valuable because of the importance of the facility information in operating that building, which of course is 85% of that total life cycle cost for that building. <laughs> A recent NIST study showed that personnel spend over $4.8 billion a year verifying that documentation accurately represented existing conditions, and another $600 million transferring that information into a useful format. It becomes obvious when seen in this light that the manual input and management of information creates rework and process breaks occur, which create opportunities for those errors and omissions we spoke of earlier. And I hope we can all agree these lead to an increased risk for both our project costs and our project schedules. We here at Autodesk and at ATG think there's a better way. First off, I want to make you aware of the fact that Autodesk was the first technology provider in construction to make that commitment to the cloud. In 2002, Autodesk's CEO, Carl Bass, announced the company's intent to fully invest in the cloud. That investment has translated into a completely retooled development organization by adding hundreds of skilled development staff that focused on building an architecture for success in the cloud that provides a connected silo, 
excuse me, connects silos together to allow data flow and enabling an automatic process or semi-automatic process of changes. This process enables detailed planning, which wasn't possible before due to the, plate, the pace of the change that we all are dealing with. The result is avoiding today's mode of a constant firefighting and getting back in control of the project information. It also enables the prediction of problems early by closely monitoring performance against the, that new viable detailed plan. It corrects the plan to avoid problems before they occur, and of course improves outcomes overall by analyzing frequently the occurring problems across the entire project and feeds those results into the planning process. Autodesk also recognizes and in, has invested in the people and expertise needed to have 100% focus on the construction industry, acquiring talent and building, building dedicated teams with professionals right from the industry. These folks eat, sleep, and breathe construction every day. But people and technology, as well as focus, just isn't enough. We need to keep learning, too. To that end, we've partnered with many of the professional organizations that you are members in today to ensure we're connecting to construction teams and engage with them where they are, either out in the field or at their professional events. Partnerships with both the Associated General Contractors and the Associated Building and Contractors enables connections at the national and local level through industry presentations, shared learnings, and event sponsorships. I'd ask that you check with your local chapters today to learn more. Having key partnerships isn't enough though. We need to keep, we need to get out there with you and see how you work on your daily basis. To that end, we have our Build X tour presented by BIM 360, where we are taking food trucks to our construction sites, feeding your field personnel some great meals on us, and using the opportunity to discuss and learn about the ways you are working today and the challenges you have. For more information, we ask that you go to gobuildx.com to sign up for your project site to have a visit from our food truck. All that still wasn't enough though. You know and understand that today, time to market is crucial, and we know we needed to get the workflows and the technologies that support them to market quickly for our customers. This is where you either build it or you buy it, and we've done both. So let me tell you what we've been up to. We've had a long-standing reputation when it comes to project document management, with the introduction of Buzzsaw in the early 2000s. We've had all these years of experience to learn how to grow our capabilities with document management, and with software as a service platforms. We've been building upon, learning from, and improving on this service ever since. We also heard loud and clear that coordination was important to your business. So we brought several key acquisitions, Revit, Navisworks, and Glue, together in purpose-built capabilities and workflows for coordination that are proven in the industry today, integrating all three applications together. Then, of course, we knew that there was an issues and challenges in the field that technology could meet. We acquired Vela as the leader of the industry for field management. We also acquired Get the Point to integrate fabrication and pre-construction with the layout process. And we acquired Our Plan to address the critical planning phases as you move from pre-construction to execution. All of these products have been built on since acquisition, and we'll talk about them more specifically in a moment. After all that, we also built a brand new application that has a tight connection with the owner by building a brand new mobile first technology for operations. If we left it here though, we wouldn't be any different than any of the other point solutions we discussed earlier, but that's not our vision. We know you don't want to be burdened with managing apps. You wanna focus on building buildings and managing projects. Let me show you where we're going and how it all comes together. The Autodesk vision that is being delivered today is to provide a scalable, interoperable, and connected platform for all your construction lifecycle needs. We started with that industry-leading capabilities and proven workflows in construction and pre-construction, and then extended the valuable information from planning out to the field for use in execution and performance on the job site. Pre-construction coordination is valuable to the process today, you know some of these workflows and some of the Autodesk tools uh, used for them. But as we move through the planning and into the field, Autodesk solves your change management issues with a suite of offerings 
purpose-built for the execution phases of your project. All of this is grounded in docs, which is the foundation for the entire platform. But it doesn't stop there. What's unique about our offering is that you can scale your investment as your needs expand. So as I mentioned before, we see a lot of construction customers today struggling with their use of their view, markup, issue, point solutions to truly manage the change on their job sites. But Docs is now the foundation for change management they and you need. So let me tell you about what differentiates Docs in the industry today. First off, we believe you need version control with any view, markup, and issue product that can be brought out into the field to automate that drawing and markup distribution. We also believe that you need to manage the versioning and the change process for all of your 2D documentation, but also need a way that makes it easy as possible for you to use and adopt 3D models as appropriate. Autodesk BIM 360 Docs brings it all together working with a version control platform for both 2D and 3D in the same simple and easy to use system. And let me remind you that this is all part of that scalable platform I just mentioned that will grow with your needs and your business. So let's now get into a little bit more detail on what Docs is all about. Docs offers a host of capabilities across the four key areas of document management, publishing, sharing, viewing, and modifying. Docs aids with the publishing of documents by automating common and repeatable tasks that occur throughout a project. Automatic extraction of sheets from AutoCAD plans and Revit models. The object character recognition or OCR of title blocks to automate the naming process when working with uh, PDFs. As well as the merging and separation of PDF sheets when we have multi-sheet PDFs that are shared with us. And of course, it gives us a logical organization of the information that is construction specific. We can come in and be able to organize things by sets, by submittals, by discipline, whatever it may be. It's logical for us in the construction space as opposed to just a general document management offering. Docs also aids with the sharing of documents by ensuring the right people have access to the right information. It does this by presenting information in a logical format, aligned with construction project phases and sets, including percent complete phases. Also by tracking and maintaining versions to allow quick navigation between versions. We can help identify changes or roll back to an earlier point in time as needed. Also, we control the release of information to the field through permissions and access rights. That gives us the flexibility to assign permissions at the user, at the role, or even at the company level. Docs aids with the viewing of documents by offering powerful, fast viewing of both 2D and 3D, as well as many other file types in a single viewer. The viewing technology provides quick navigation between that 2D and 3D document in a single and easy to use uh, excuse me, interface and it's optimized for viewing on mobile devices. We also have logical lists and thumbnail and folder views that make it easy to find the documents you need. Not to mention we can access documents both on the web, but also from iPhone and iPad apps, and that includes offline sync for use in the field when web access is not available. That gives us the best of both worlds. We can take advantage of a central uh, repository of information stored in the cloud, but we can go offline and get inside our building as needed and still have access to the information. Last but not least, we can view the properties from both 3D models as well as the properties from any drawing elements in those documents. Next, we can talk about how Docs aids in the markup and document the markup of documents, excuse me, by providing a collaborative viewing markup and issue management system. We have both 2D and 3D markup tools, including thumbnail views of all markups for quick review and approval. We can assign project issues in context to project members in the field, and we provide visibility into the whole project issues with reports and dashboards. So by centralizing all the document management into a single cloud-based app, your entire project team will be working from the latest documents, plans, and models all the time. 
And when project teams have the right information at the right time, work happens faster, risks are lowered, and errors are eliminated. This quote-unquote single source of truth is the first of three important differentiators that BIM 360 Docs brings to the industry. With a single source of truth, you gain the ability to clearly convey the story of what happens during a construction project. Without it, project teams often struggle with the questions of, are you working with the most current drawings and specs? Too often, that answer can vary depending on who you ask. The architect's idea of what is current is whatever they published most recently. The permitting agency's idea of what is current is whatever they've approved most recently. The owner's idea of what is most current is whatever they've authorized for pricing. And of course, from our perspective as the contractors, our idea of what's most current is whatever we've been authorized to build. It's rare that all these groups are referring to the same version of documents. BIM 360 Docs puts everyone on the same page. The second primary differentiator is that Docs' ability to keep the office and the field in sync. We address cha challenges of collecting, coordinating, and communicating changes and versions. During a project, data is shared. It's modified and shared again multiple times by design teams and general contractors. Often, by the time the construction team is ready to offer pricing, data has been shared up to 12 times. Versions are created for every version, excuse me, and for every version, there can be thousands of sheets. That means version control is extremely important, particularly to, to protect against litigation. To keep versions up to date and more, to also keep that moving, excuse me, also to keep the project moving along, Input is gathered and coordinated through every project team member. Giving anytime, anywhere access to documents and the tools to create and assemble markups, tightly controlled through permissions, helps to streamline that process. The third primary differentiator is that BIM 360 Docs is an integrated version control platform that's purpose-built for construction projects and construction project teams. Unlike many document management and collaboration applications, Docs is built specifically for construction projects and to support the entire project team from design through handover. With Docs, the project is at the center, keeping everyone involved, always connected, current, and in control. As I mentioned earlier, that support for 2D, 3D, or combined workflows. Also specific functionality and controls for content publishers, editors, and consumers but also powerful version control and permissions to control access to the information. And of course, that single repository throughout the construction process. So now that we've set that up, we've given you some framework around what the, the offering is all about and how Autodesk is bringing it to market, but also some of the details around it. We wanna show you the proof in the pudding. So I'm gonna ask my colleague, um, Sean Butler, to come online. He's gonna go ahead and switch over and, and grab and the control here and be able to show us a demonstration. So Sean, take it away. All right, Anthony. Uh, let me know when you can see my screen. We've got it. All right, great. Well, hello, everyone. So as Anthony was saying, uh, BIM 360 Docs is a full web application that's accessible from your desktop or your iPad device. And you're going to get to that from the iPad, obviously, by our iPad app. And from the desktop, uh, you can come in and you can get to all of our BIM 360 apps by just going to our BIM360.autodesk.com. And that will bring you into the sign-in for any of our BIM 360 products. Once you've clicked your BIM 360 Docs sign-in, you're going to come in. And once you go through, you'll come into our regular Docs page. So. From here on out, we're going to think about the life of a contractor and somebody that's in the field, somebody that's in the office, and somebody that's just mobile, and they need access to the documentation to be able to review it, make decisions, and most importantly, be able to communicate those decisions back to the entire team. So when that person logs in, whoever they are, we're going to start with them being on their desktop, on their laptop computer, um, so they're somewhere where they're on that physical device and they're going to log in and first thing they're going to do, they're going to come to this blank setup of all of the projects that they have access to. 
So most importantly, once you're in the DOCS system, once you're there and you've been granted permission to see a project, you're going to have all of those projects right at this drop down. So they're going to come in and they're going to start their work. And when they come in, they're going to come into that screen and a bunch of information is going to come to them very quickly. And so if we start to think about this, what did that person need to do? Well, first of all, they needed to access the project and all of those project documents. The thing that Anthony was talking about, what version of that document did they need to access? Well, current version of that document is sitting right here. So they can see that right away. They can see what the version is and all of that information that's in front of them. So once again, easy, accessible. And now they can actually start to do some work with that. So if that person was coming in and they wanted to see just, well, what's gone on? So they'd be able to come in and they'd be able to see things that were updated. They'd be able to see who updated them, the versioning, all of the documents. And so that's all sitting in that plans folder. So this is that folder that allows them to go in and see all of the sheets that came from that Revit model. And it's very important here that what you're actually seeing here, if we go down to this very bottom piece, you are seeing all of the sheets that came from the small medical center model. And so important in that, the BIM manager, the VDC manager, whoever was responsible for getting them up there, what they did, they said, you know, we need to give them the latest documents. They came through, they found those documents, once they came to that Revit file, and this is the most important thing, they actually came to a Revit file. They said, I'm going to load this file to the project, and so that's now going to be uploaded. And the best part is they're going to get a little email. So down at the bottom here, we'll have this little update happening. But I started to do that because you'll see some things that will happen that are important for other people in the field. But while that was happening, that person that needed to review something, they're coming through and they're starting to go through and review their documents. So they've clicked on this lower level and they knew that there were some things that had happened. So there was some work that was done and they said, you know what, let me just look at this. So most importantly here, they can come in and look at that sheet. Not only can they look at that sheet, but they can come through and they can see all of the sheets in a quick view. So they can come through and just start clicking any of these. And what you're going to notice is these come in very quickly. So as you know, I'm loading an entire Revit model to the project right now, as you saw. And so I can still, while that's happening, I can still work. So they can go through through the quick. I'm going to come back here and most importantly, they said, I knew this work was happening. Well, let me see what's, what's been done. So we can come through and we see there's been some red marking happening. So they can come over here and they can instantly say, well, let me see, were there any issues here? No, I didn't have any issues today. We'll go over how he can add an issue if he wanted to. Clearly, there were some red marks that happened. So I can come through and I can look at this red mark. And as you see, when I click this red mark, all the other red marks dimmed out. So the other open red mark that was here is went dim. And I can see that this was looked at, this was reviewed, and it was closed. So I know that whatever this issue was, whatever this markup was, it was addressed and that's been closed. But I can also come and look at this open one. And now I can start to see that I've got an open red mark. They need to check the security system. And obviously, I know that this is still open because this hasn't been closed yet. So right off the, the, right off the bat, we can start to come in and really start to consume a lot of information. So with that, there's also another powerful piece that they can do here. And I will come back to these issues. Before they actually open this up, now we're sitting here in our list view. If the end user switches to the icon view, they can come through and that end user can instantly see all of the issues and all of the red marking that's been done. And so you'll see here it says we have zero issues, but we have two red marks. And so they can go through and they can start to browse these and very quickly see what's been red marked 
and what hasn't been. So once again, right at your fingertips, all of the information. And also the important thing that you can see here is these are all the individual sheets, but also they have access to the entire model. And so I'm just going to click on that model just to show you the access within that model. And this is, you know, this is the viewer that you know and love. It's our large model viewer. It uh, gives you a lot of power to come in, look at our models, and see everything in it very fast, very light. But also some other important things about this. Since we're bringing over the entire Revit model, we're also bringing over all that information. So once again, that end user who needs information can start to click on objects and items within the model and can look at their properties. And they can come through and they can see every property that came over from Revit with this basic roof piece. And that will go on with any other object that they click at. So going right down to the panel system and coming into the columns. So once again, powerful way to communicate information to anyone, anywhere, at any time. And once again, a very light way to do it because it's all web and we're not going to load anything onto that machine. So also looking at this, also the powerful tool that's in front of you is that as they come through here and they start to look at the versioning, if you hold over this, you'll see we see the word preview, but in the corner here, there's a very small icon that becomes available that allows you to do compares. And so this will allow me to pick any two sheets and compare them. So I'm going to look at version 3 and version 4 here, and I'm going to run a compare. And immediately when these sheets come in, what I want to show you is we are in our light table view. So we have stacked these sheets up, and as you can see, we have one version of the drawing that is lightly dimmed behind the current version of the drawing. So we can start to see immediately that there were some changes made here. Now there's some other things that we can do. We can come over here to our eyedropper for color, and now we can put this into color. And so what you'll now get is the current version is sitting here in blue. The past version is in red. And that's a powerful feature for when I come over and I use my slider. So as you can see, instantly when I turn the slider on, this half of the sheet went blue. This half of the sheet went red. So I know that this half of the sheet is the version 3. Here's the version 4, and now I can grab my slider, and as I come across, you can start to see that blue, current version, red is anything in that past version, and now you'll start to see also that wall is now making a change. And so I can now use my slider, and I can see from sheet to sheet the changes that have been made. And because of the color identification, I clearly know that this sheet is my version 3. So once again, that end user isn't guessing. They know I have the most accurate drawing in version 4. They want to see what that change was. I'm now looking at that past version, version 3. So once again, we have a powerful way to compare it whether you use our slider, whether you're using the light table feature to be able to stack those drawings on top of each other. And this can happen within that plans folder over all of your drawings. Now, you've noticed something instantly when I clicked back on here. If we look down at the bottom, you see that it says my files. I've uploaded files. It now says it is green. Well, that means it's completed the process, and as you can see, I am now on version 5 all the way across all of these drawings. So I have now uploaded the latest version on all of the documents, and so everything has now been updated and is in there. So another powerful thing is that when somebody's working in the office, they can be updating the information, and everybody that's connected will receive and see that these files have been updated. And so that's powerful in that 
no longer am I guessing has the update happened, I know that that's happened. So my end user has now gone through, they now see there's been updates. So I'm going to come back into this drawing and we're going to go through and we're going to look at some things that we can do. So this update has happened. I'm going to come through here and as you can see, we're on that current version. The updates happen and so my past markups are no longer there because we don't need them. But they've not addressed this issue yet on this security room. So all right. They haven't addressed it, so I can come in here and I can say, you know what, I need to add an issue. And my issue is, is guys, this has been sitting, we haven't done it. So we can come through and we can do this both from the desktop and the iPad. So we can now come through and we can say, I need to add an issue through here and we can start to add issues. So this hasn't been done yet. So I can come through and I can say, you know what, I have an issue. So as you can see, I put a pin in this room. And so I can come through and what's the title of this? I need you to check the security room. I can come through, I can add a detailed description of what I want them to do. And I'm just going to do check for the, the hints of time here. And I can also add a location for this. So I can tell them, go right in, I can look at the room number, and I can say, this is room 1502. So they know where it is. Now most importantly with this is, I can now assign this to somebody. So my team hasn't gone through this yet. So you know what, I'm gonna go to Anthony, and I'm gonna say, Anthony, I need this checked. And then I can put a due date in. Because Anthony wasn't assigned this before, I'm going to give him a break. I'm going to give him a week to look at this. So here's my issue. It's set. It's in draft mode. So that's now sitting there. I can say done in draft mode and I can leave it here because I want to go through and see other things. Or I can go in and I can say this is now open and I'm done. So now this issue has now been assigned to Anthony. Anthony will receive a notification of that and then Anthony can come in and he can start to address this because the team hasn't done it. So powerful thing, we can do issues. I am going to show you um, this issue off of the iPad also and we'll talk about some of the other things there. I'm going to do that off of the video simply because my Reflector app, when I go to show Reflector, for some reason it's kicking me off of uh, the actual meeting. So I was able to use uh, one of the other videos we had because I do think it's important that you see how well this works on an iPad. So with the iPad, we're going to come in and as you can see, we're, we're looking at that iPad and we're looking at all the things that are there. Well, we're able to go through this and we can now start to uh, pull through and look at the actual drawings on my iPad. So I can go through, click them, they're going to open up. When they're open and we're sitting there and we're looking at them, we can browse through, we can start to zoom in, and once again, we can see those individual items very light and very fast. Now as we start to look at other things on the iPad, the powerful feature here is we can do this connected or disconnected. I always like to remind everybody of that, is that we're not just subject to being on the network. So if you have an iPad that's not connected, you can download all of your information. You can then open that information up in the field, make those decisions, make those um, issues, make those markups you have. And then once you come back and you're connected again, you can then upload and sync all of those. But if you have broadband in the field or if you have Wi-Fi on the job site, then you would be connected all the time in real time and all of these things would happen right across that broadband or Wi-Fi. So as I continue the video now, you can see that we're going to create a new issue off the iPad. And so we've now come in. We've opened up the ability to have that issue. And as you can see here, it's already telling us that we're on the ground floor. We know we're looking at version two of this, 
and I apologize that you know I did update. But we can come in, we can enter the title for that, and so we're now going to be able to give real-time information about it. We can go through, right from the iPad, assign it. So I'm going to assign this to myself. And so once again, all of the users are there and ready for you. We're going to select that date the same way again. So we've come through, we've got that information, and once again, that ability at the bottom to see whether we're going to be in draft mode or not. I'm going to add the description of this. And so in this case, we're going to go through and this needs to be resolved. It's just been open too long. And now I'm going to go back and reinforce that location again. And so we'll go in, we'll add the location. And so we're now looking in a different room and it's the x-ray room. So we've done all that. We've marked it up. We've completed it. And so that power of going in and whether I'm at the desktop or whether I'm sitting from my iPad, I can do either one of these things. So coming back now to our, our desktop end user. So that's the person in the field. They've done their work, they've looked, they've marked up. So that's very powerful for them. But we have this person that's been working on this in the office. And so the back end to this, you know, all of the work that needs to be done, so some things that we can do that's important for an end user. First thing is if you look across here at these uh, titles that are in black, those are attributes. And we know that on your title blocks and on your drawings, there are plenty of things that you like to track. Well, we give you the ability to come in and you can start to add custom attributes. And these can be anything that you want to add. They can be alpha, alphanumeric, or picked. So you can see here I've added a bunch. So I've added phase, I've added a tracking number, a construction phase, and then you know maybe you have a special phase just for your company, so your company's KLJ. But simple to do, you can come in and you can add any phase to anything that you want. So we can come through and um, we'll look at um, drawn by. And so if you want to select in your company and you say, you know what, we want to know who drew these, you can come in and then you can do that by a drop-down list if you know people, or it can just be a text field that they're going to come in and do. And so we can add that. And so that drawn by will now be added to that top area. And so you can see I can now record it. And so when I, when I then come into my drawings, I can then select that and I can make any of those ads. So in here you can see for a value for a phase, I can come in and do my values. For a tracking number, I can come in and I can set that. So once again, powerful tools that we go through and we add that we allow you to add for your company and for what your individuals are going to be doing. Also within here, um, we also give you that ability to have this other folder here, which is our shop drawings folder. Very special folder in that. This is going to allow you to take a multi-page PDF and upload a multi-page PDF here. And when you upload it, we are going to go through and we are going to split those pages out. And so those pages will be split out individually. So you can come through. So now you can communicate your shop drawings. So once again, that team in the office, they've received the shop drawings. And look, you know, we have offices that are all over the world. And so now you're able to load these shop drawings up and allow the intellectual property, no matter where that person is sitting, to be applied to your project. Because they can come in. And here we have a multi-page PDF. And you can see, we're going to zoom in on this and we're going to show this PDF clear and fast. And so they're able to come in and all of those same features that we talked about. They can come in and put an issue to it, a markup to it, and so they can come through and they can start to review your multi-page PDF by the individual sheet right in order. And once again, all the same power all the versioning, everything that's here, and then that same idea again of these attributes that you can come through and you can actually you know if you want to have an approved column here, 
you can come in and you can say, you know what, can I please have something that when this comes through, it's approved, and I know that's been approved. So you can add that property to it. So an important thing, so two very powerful folders that have special functionality. And I'm gonna come back to one other function that we have here within our title blocks in a second. But now also that person that's working on all of these drawings on the back end and they're in the office, it's a person you don't get to see a lot, they've also come through and they can set up an entire folder structure for your company. And so this folder structure can be set up by project so it can be different for every project and so in this project you can see a very very simple one they've come through and they've said we want to have our design documentation our construction documentation and so now within here they can start to put other information so we have our CAD file so they can come through and they can now start to add in some files that maybe we need people to look at and review um, we want them to be with the project and so here's our, our CAD files so we can come through here and here's a reflected ceiling plan and so they can come through and they can start to look at this MEP equipment plan and so very specific detail for what that person wanted them to have but remember the power of this is we have brought the information across so the person that's reviewing all of these air terminals they can start to come in and look at the properties and the information for all of these. So once again, we're giving access to the information that's been brought across. And one of the other things here that's important is that when they bring these in, we're going to version it, and there's no limit to what you're going to bring in. So as many versions of this that goes in, they're able to add that and give everybody access. So also the things we can come through and they can start to store all of the models that have come through and they can start to keep the submittals which is also an important thing because they can come through there we go they can come through and they can actually see the individual submittals and once again the versions of those submittals so as long as that version name doesn't change, we're going to keep that version of that document. And once again, we're going to give you the ability to have that submittal right at your fingertips. So all of the team working within a very structured area, always having the information there. Other powerful thing for this person who's working on this is the ability as that project administrator, as that VDC BIM manager, the person that's adding and taking away people, is that they can also come through and on the fly, they can come through, they can say, we need to add some other people. And so they can come through and they can say, you know what, I want to add another person to the project. And so they're able to go through and start selecting members, people that are within your company, people that are within your, uh, within your choice of, of people that you want on projects. And they're able to say, you know what, I'm going to add in Andrew here and they can add him through it. And so we're going to add him in and once we've added him, they can now start to go through and start to permission what he's able to do. And so very important for that decision maker who's adding people and taking people away from the project, they can instantly come in and so I've added, I've added AP and AP is going to be one of our people who's going to come in and, and he's going to be an editor. So I can just pull across this and I can make him an editor that simple AP is now an editor within the plans file and so these permissions being important if AP was only a publisher important AP could add files to any folder he had access to but he cannot see anything in those files so that's just important for some companies that have people that do a lot of work. They don't want them inside of other things, but they do want them adding information. We also have our viewer. So our viewer is exactly what you think it is. They can add and they can view everything that's in that folder. Our editor, well, that person's going to be able to go in and they can now add, they can view it, they can now do markups, issues, and then we have our control person. 
And our control person is very special, and this saves time for this person that is responsible for adding and taking people away. And why this control person is important is that when this control person goes in to add somebody, if I make somebody who is not my company, they're not in my company, so I add somebody from Joe's company, so that, that company is a, a large construction company. And I go in and I say, you know what, Anderson Construction, and let's just say I had a specific person from Anderson, and I made them a control person. That person has the power to add and take away people from their company and their company only. So why is that important? Anybody that has a Johnson Construction email address, they can now add them and take them away from the project, and that takes away a big burden from that actual admin for this construction job because they're not going to get a call from the possible infinite number of companies every time that company wants to add somebody or take them away. Very, very powerful feature for that person working in the office. So they've gone through, they've added people, we have them in there. So now we can go through and AP is now on that project. The last feature that I'm going to go over is our title block feature. And so this is a feature that allows you to go in and actually set up a title block for OCRing so you can have a title block template to actually control and uh, add and take away within your title block. So what are we going to do? We're going to come in and we're going to add a new title block. And we're going to give it the size of the sheets that are within this project. And so once we've done that, we're then going to come in and we're actually going to select the document. So this is going to look inside of my plans folder and it's going to show me all of my sheets. And give me one second. Let me just check something real quick here. All right, I think I know why. Let me go back and do that again. And so we're going to go in and it's going to show me all of my sheets. So it's basically going in the plans folder. It's looking inside of every single sheet that's in there. Ah, thank you. And so we're going to go through. We'll select one of those sheets. We're going to open that up. Now some really important things when you do this. That person's going to want to go in, they're going to open this up, and they're going to bring in that title block so they can see that title block clearly. And we're going to go in and we're going to crop that title block area that we need. And so they want to go in and they're going to set this up, and they're going to grab everything within that section. So now we have that area. Now we're going to start to go through, and we're going to start to select those individual pieces that we want. And we're going to select these whole areas. And the reason why we want to do that is because should your number become a bigger number, you want to make sure that it's actually scanning that entire number. Same idea when we go in and we actually pick the title. When we do the title, we want to go in and we want to select that whole title area. So if you go through and you now have a multi-column uh, multi title, it's going to get all of those. And then if you remember, we had those attributes. So we then can go in and we can now look at those attributes that we had and those ones that you wanted to add. So in this case, that drawn by. And so we'll come through and we'll select that drawn by area because we want to make sure that we have that. And so we'll go in and we'll select that whole area there. And hopefully we got it all. So we now have those. We can set those up. And you can't duplicate. So we'll get it. And so we now have a template for this project. And so 
this is really, really important for that person that's managing all of these sheets on the back end. And here's why. When they go through and they do an upload of a set of drawings of that page, they're able to assign that template to that drawing. And then when they've done that assignment, they're able to go through, and you'll see in this published area, they're going to be able to go through and actually review each one of those. So what I did is, is I did load one just for a sake of time. And what would happen is once they've done that upload, they'll have this chance to come through. And when they've done that assignment, they're actually able to go through and see any of those properties and make sure that each one of those have filled in correctly. And when they've done that, they can go through and they can publish that one up. And so we can now manage our title blocks through our templates and our OCRing. And so as you can see, with BIM 360 Docs, we just have a powerful way to go through and allow anyone anywhere access to the entire project. They're able to come through, view any piece of that project at any time, anywhere, and really go through and start to look at it and make decisions in real time on what they're seeing. And so uh, I hope that was a good presentation for you, and uh, I'll hand it back over to Anthony. Great. Thank you, Sean. And thanks, everybody, for hanging with us here. We'll do a couple quick summaries here, and then we'll open it up for any Q&A that we have. I will remind everybody that if you do have a question for us, to go ahead and drop it into the questions panel. Um, and I just need to change back to being a presenter here. All right. So in summary, we want to kind of review everything we've gone through today. Um, the first thing is um, <clears throat> we saw that we discussed how the industry and your projects today are being disrupt disrupted with a lot of different field technologies and how that enables an opportunity to manage that change more effectively. But we also discussed how some of those point solutions many companies like yours are using today have created more challenges for you in managing the flow of information to the field. We covered how the Autodesk offering fills the need for a scalable platform for managing documents and information and is providing that platform for you to grow your business and technology adoption. And that's the idea of whether it's 2D or 3D model-based workflows or from the field out to the office. And lastly, we discussed how the use of an unmanaged view markup issue product can lead to significant challenges on your projects, reducing profit and increasing schedules, and that Autodesk BIM 360 Docs offerings delivers an integrated version control platform to meet and overcome those challenges and to help you deliver on time and on or under budget. So where do we go from here? What we'd ask everybody that's with us today to do is really, you know, let's get started with BIM 360 Docs. We can do that by signing you and your company up for a trial of BIM 360 Docs today. The ATG team will be sending out the recording of this webinar, as well as a specific link for you to use to do that sign up. From there, you'll be contacted by an Autodesk success manager. That person will work with you to ensure you have a quick start with docs and will be there as a gu to guide you through that trial process and answer any questions you have or provide guidance as you progress through your evaluation. From there, you, I want to also thank everybody for their time. And as always, myself and the entire ATG team are here throughout the entire process to ensure your success. So with that, let me go ahead and just blank out the screen here. So you're not going to see anything as we answer these questions unless we need to share screen. Let me go through. There are a couple here. Um, so a question here from Tom. Any tools for submittal and RFI creation and control? So I'll cover that one. Um, what we do have is the infrastructure for both of these things. We don't have a module called RFI or submittals, but what you can do is use the issues and um, the ability to sign control and sign those issues to, to the right people on the team to use that for an RFI creation and control process. Um, essentially, it's issue-based RFI tracking. From a submittals perspective, it comes down to the idea of in those other project folders, 
that's where we would use the, the folder-based system to manage our subs and our specialty trades and the submittals. And this is where I really think BIM 360 Docs differentiates in that we have that strong control around the access um, where we can have one folder structure where only certain parties can see and view that, that information. And then a second folder where there are different set of parties can see it. So that's really where we're submitting the information, whether it be uh, the bid documents or the, the, the latest versions of, of certain documents. So um, nothing called out as far as called RFIs and submittals, but we can support those workflows. Next uh, question here from Ray, which CAD file formats are supported? Um, so from uh, the basis here, it really comes down to any AutoCAD DWG. Um, so that includes our vertical applications like AutoCAD Architect and AutoCAD MEP or Civil 3D. Um, so it will read all DWG-based drawing for file formats. We also have support for Navisworks files. And Navisworks really opens us up to the rest of the file formats that are out there, whether it be DGN or, you know, things coming out of Tecla or whatever it may be. Um, so pretty wide range of support as far as what can be uh, loaded into the system. To be clear, though, when we showed all that automatic extraction um, and the, the sheets being generated for us, that comes from a DWG file. Um, the NWC file will be just uploading that file and viewing the information within it. Um, so hopefully that clears it up. And it looks like that's all we have for for uh, uh, questions in here. Um, Chris, if you're on the line, I don't know if you want to add anything um, to to the session here. Otherwise, we'll we'll shut it down. And Anthony, I was muted there. Sorry, just wanted to get a. Uh... Yeah, I see that last question, any direct connection to Revit files? Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, in, that, in that plans folder, uh, when you saw me show each one of those uh, sheets that were there, that was all one Revit model that was uploaded, and each one of the sheets that you have set within that Revit model was extracted. Correct. So that, that was there. And then for the shop drawing folder, just to just to touch on this, that was a single PDF, so a multi-page single PDF that was dropped on there. Each one of those were extracted. And as a side note, when you then uh, download those again, we then take all of those sheets and we put them back to a multi-page PDF. Cool. So just Great. two important things there. Great. Thanks for the, for, the, for the clarification there. So with that, we are at the top of the hour. I want to thank everybody again for their time. As we mentioned, you'll be getting a, a, a recording link for the session as well as a follow-up for a trial URL. Uh, I want to thank ATG for giving us the opportunity to uh, present today and uh, wish everybody a great afternoon. Thank you.